Welcome back to Devon and Cornwall and a series that tries to show you some of the best areas and activities that these wonderful UK counties have to offer. If you're joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Caroline and so far I've already wandered along a few sections of the Southwest Coast Path, including from the Lizard Point to Kynance Cove. I walked through what felt like absolute paradise hiking from Land's End to Porth Kernow Beach with a cheeky stop at the Minack Theatre to watch a performance. And I've also taken in some of Cornwall's mining heritage as I walked the path between Givor Tin Mine and Batalic Crown Engine Houses, stopping off for a quick tour of Levant Steam Engine along the way. I've also hiked in Dartmoor's Lydford Gorge and gone in search of a pretty waterfall too. But it's not all been hiking. I've cycled the Camel Trail into Padstow, thrown myself off of multiple sea cliffs in a co-steering tour, gawped in tropical gardens and whizzed around like a big kid on a jet ski. Today, however, I'll be lacing up the hiking shoes and taking to the Southwest Coastal Path one last time, at least for this year though. If during the video you find yourself enjoying it, please consider giving it a like and hitting the subscribe button so that you can join me in my Devon and Cornwall adventures. morning and welcome to Tintagel. This town or village is super cute with gorgeous tea rooms and pubs and B&Bs and you've also got the National Trust's old post office and of course there is the castle and Merlin's cave too full of so much history. Originally we were going to come here yesterday so that we could do a circular hike in part along the southwest coastal path but unfortunately the weather forecast had very different ideas for us. We have this morning just checked out of our shepherd's hut cottage or airbnb holiday home and we do have a couple of hours drive up to somerset later on today so we've had to modify today's plans ever so slightly so instead of doing a circular hike we are going to be getting on a bus which i think is due just a few minutes before nine o'clock this morning it's going to take us up to the coastal town of boz castle and we're going to do a point to point walk along the southwest coastal path from boz castle back to tintagel where we have left the car a very, very pretty bus ride between the two towns. Views overlooking farmers' fields and the coastline, and we realised that it did go past the lay-by that we parked in yesterday for the waterfall. We've now arrived in Boz Castle and the bus journey, one crazy thing that happened was the bus driver stopped and a woman, I couldn't quite work out what had happened, but I don't think she had either cash or card to be able to pay for the bus journey. And the bus driver was so patient and waited while she looked through her purse. And then in the end, she was like, oh, I don't have it with me. And the bus driver just said, oh, it's fine. Just pay later and let her on the bus. And I suppose it's because the next bus isn't for like another two hours, but just coming from London, like that level of patience and I suppose the trust that she will pay later was, I suppose, very refreshing to see. Now, even though the weather forecast is better today than what it was yesterday, which is why we've pushed this activity back by a day, it is still incredibly windy, hence why I'm just putting my hair up into a ponytail right now and there is the potential for showers to happen so it's starting to cloud over a little bit now it has been beautiful blue skies up until this point and we're just kind of keeping our fingers crossed that the weather might play ball i think before we start i'd really like to have a bit of a nosy around boz castle because there's some really interesting history both quite historic from like over a century ago and also some history that's a little bit more recent This is the second rain shower that we've now had since walking down to the harbour. But this harbour at Boz Castle was in operation as actually quite a major port up until the very late 1800s. And that was in part because the train line to Camelford didn't turn up until 1893. Therefore, huge 
ships were coming over from the likes of Wales and Bristol but even timber was coming across on boats from Canada but because of the island that's just here at the tip of the entrance to Boz Castle's harbour it meant that the locals had a boat that had eight oarsmen on it and those eight men would row themselves in tugging in these huge ships then when we got to this really really small harbour area there were huge teams of men in the local village who would use ropes to be able to pull the ships to stop them from bashing up against the harbour wall's edges. Once the railway was extended to Camelford, it was the final nail in the coffin for Boscastle's shipping trade. Companies found movement of goods via the railways easier. Today, Boscastle's harbour is mainly used for pleasure or by the fishing industry. Back in 2004, the village suffered from horrendous flooding, causing significant damage to the properties along the river in the lower sections of Boscastle. The community came together and locals who lived further up the hill opened their doors to those whose homes had been ravaged for the months that the restoration work took. To try and prevent future flooding, the riverbed in the village has been dug deeper, but with a good aesthetic design, it doesn't look like man has interfered too much. After a short but sweet mosey around Boz Castle, we have now gone up the hillside to follow the southwest coastal path. The town of Boz Castle, as well as obviously being quite steeped in history, is really quite quaint and picturesque. There's some gorgeous, gorgeous cottages, once again with some beautiful gardens and flowers out front. But they've also got things like tea rooms and fish and chip shop, as well as like the pubs and hotels and what have you. And then the harbour itself is very picturesque to walk around with all of the fishing boats in there. We've been rained on twice but then glorious sunshine's come out I can feel that it's just starting to spit again right now I think today is just going to be a day of really really mixed weather it must have been all of about 30 seconds since I last spoke to the camera and then yeah it's just showered and then it's lightened up again it's gonna be one heck of an interesting walk today As well as the weather forecast saying that it was going to be very windy and it would be a mixture of sun, showers and cloud, the weather forecast around here, I guess because it's coastal, also lets you know what the weather's doing out at sea and therefore what the waves are going to be like. And today for almost all of the Cornish coast, with the exception of one that described it as being choppy, everywhere else it was described as being messy. And now that I'm actually here looking out over the water, whether it was back at Boz Castle's harbour, whether it's here where you've got the caves and the sea stacks, I think messy is an excellent way to describe what the waves are doing today. It's crazy this weather, but it's certainly making for it to be a very, very interesting hike. So far on this trip we've walked two other sections of the southwest coastal path. So there's one on the Lizard Peninsula and then we did another one from Land's End to the Minac Theatre and I thought that in comparison to the Lizard that the Land's End to the Minac Theatre was very very up and down but that was nothing in comparison to this. This is majorly undulating. I don't even think undulating is perhaps the right word but it's really nice when you're like going down on the cardio. 
but then when you're going up it's quite exhausting but then when you're going up it's really really nice on like the knees and of course when you're coming down jolts on the knees but it's weird how you know it's all still the southwest coastal path and yet every single section has just been so completely different and i think perhaps like the difference in weather as well of each experience has also added to how different these experiences all have been Castle where we've come from and then up some more but if it's swirling we might end up getting drenched on this walk because to me that is not a shower cloud that is just a running for at least an hour cloud the scenery that we're walking through is just about as varied as what the weather's been today so the section's a little bit like this where it's really, really enclosed and you've got high bushes up on one side so we're really being protected from the wind and there's so many ferns and you'll drop down into valleys where you cross over trickling streams. There's been the odd sections of boardwalks. We've then walked through open meadows or farmer's fields. And speaking of farmer's fields, we've been lucky to see quite a bit of livestock. We've been able to walk in amongst the cows and certainly Cornish cows. Do not mind us just wandering in amongst them. They're really placid. Out in the distance, we've been able to see farmers sheep grazing in the fields. We've even been lucky enough to see the National Trust's ponies that they've put out in a field to help eat the coarse grass so that the wildflowers stand a much better chance of survival. So just stopping for our 11Zs, I brought along a breakfast bar and because we weren't too sure if the bus accepted contactless payment or not, we only had a £20 note, we just went into a convenience store before catching the bus this morning and picked up a drink each just to try and break down that £20 note and I'm not normally one to go for these sorts of coffees, for me personally just the Americano and milk without sugar is perfect, it's probably going to be incredibly sugary but perhaps the sugar rush I need to keep on going but as always I've just tried to stop somewhere where there is a spectacular view and this is it and there's a bench it's perfect I knew that on this walk we were going to go past the ladies window but what I didn't realize is that you'd actually have to go off the track to get to it and the couple who we've just gone and passed there very kindly stopped and let us know and they said just make sure that you drop down off of the path to be able to get to it and they've shown us photographs on their phone. over a stream and I think this one's been the most impressive one out of all of them. I'm about 99% certain that at this point if you were to cross over the footbridge and go upstream instead of downstream you could get to St Necton's Glen which is the waterfall that we went and visited yesterday. The initial plan had been to do this as a circular hike yesterday which would have taken in that waterfall but we waited until the heavens had stopped raining in the morning because it was a torrential downpour and did that waterfall yesterday afternoon and I'll link you guys to that video if you are interested in it and then today we're just doing it as a there and back and oh look the heavens have opened once again I 
am concluding that this valley along the southwest coastal path is a cross between the ferry pools on the Isle of Skye, which was paving with tourists and in comparison there's only a few other people here and also it's giving me flashbacks to Iceland as well. Lunch time now and we've just got to packed up a salad of cheese, ham, I think there's iceberg lettuce, some grated carrots, some really fancy tomatoes. We picked up the quite nice ones where it's like yellow and red and orange. We've got some radishes in there for a little bit of a peppery crunch. And I know it was me who made this up yesterday. Oh, some leftover pasta from last night. Um, but I can't quite remember what was in it, but definitely ready for lunch. It's a little bit later than what we were first realizing, but as always, we wanted to find some weather with a bit of a spectacular view to be able to enjoy our lunch a little bit more. a little bit calmer you could probably mistake this for being tropical paradise it's beautiful but when the wind picks up you can really feel it too sure if it's just because it's a little bit later now it's after lunch time or if it's that we've gotten a little bit closer to Tintagel but the southwest coastal path has definitely gotten a lot busier since we started walking again after lunch and it has really narrowed in some sections and with some quite large parties and some of whom are very slow walking it has meant that we've had to do a little bit of waiting around just to be able to keep on going which is a bit of a shame but I think we are definitely getting closer we've seen the castle and it doesn't look too far now. Tintagel's castle is up on that rock behind me and it's now owned by English Heritage, but my research was also hinting that it might be owned by the royal family as well. In previous years, people would have had to have descended all the way down to the sea level and then all the way back up the steps on the other side. But more recently, the quite a feat of engineering suspension bridge has been built behind me, giving pedestrian access for people who perhaps wouldn't want the hike down and then back up on the other side. Much lower down though at sea level, you've got what looks to be two caves, but actually it's a continuous cave, so you can go in at one end and out the other when it's at low tide, and that is Merlin's Cave. Obviously it's not low tide at the moment, and the waves are crazy big today, so we won't be wandering through it. 